Og så dukker det opp en artikkel om to jenter som uh, er avbildet i en nydelige indiske og pakistanske klær. Og de danser og de kysser og de feirer uh, røttene sine. Og kjærligheten deres blir uh, verdenskjent. De blir populære fordi de elsker hverandre. Og så lurer man på, er det nok i dag? <laughs> hvorfor, hvorfor går historien verden rundt? Viral, som det heter. De er, har bakgrunn fra hvert sitt land. To nasjoner som faktisk er i krig. To religioner som har rykte på sig på å være ganske kontrollerende overfor kvinners seksualitet. Og likevel så har vi sett i, i kveld hvordan mennesker fra de samme kulturene kan gjøre et mektig og kreativt oppgjør med holdninger og fordommer. Og det er det våre neste foredragsholdere skal gjøre. Sufi is a poet, painter and photographer floating in the South Asian diaspora. She incorporates her experience of being a queer woman of color into her art by using her words and images to evoke emotions, emotions into the mind of others. Sufi is a New York native shaping her identity in different spaces. Anjali is an Oakland-based healthcare consultant by day and event planner and continent creator by night. Her work is informed by her interest in identity, politics, and outspoken advocacy for the LGBTQ community. Ta godt og varmt imot disse jentene som viste tillit, takket ja til invitasjonen og reiste hele veien til Oslo for å møte dere. Anjali og Sufi. How's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> um, we had to coordinate ahead of time so I could be sitting on my good side for this. So, <laughs> I'm Anjali. Hi, my name is Sufi. And we are, as I'm sure Shivana said, but I couldn't quite understand, um, a South Asian couple. I am Hindu and Indian. She is Muslim and Pakistani. And if you couldn't tell, we are a same-sex couple. <laughs> um, together, we create content and share it online with a global audience um, across different social media platforms. Um, I was born in Canada and raised in California, and I currently live in Oakland. Um, as Shavana mentioned, I'm a healthcare consultant by day at a boutique healthcare consulting firm. We provide services to hospitals, which we really need in America's broken healthcare system. Um, and I recently went part time at that job to pursue event planning, largely because my partner is always encouraging me to take risks and also to pursue the things that make me happy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't think I can top that. That was really cute. <laughs> um, so, I was born and raised in New York. I recently just moved to California to be with Anjali in January. Um, we were long distance for a while. Um, I live in Oakland now. Um, uh, I'm an art teacher, a poet, and a photographer. That's how I support myself. This is titled The Malik Series. My last name is Malik. Um, and a large portion of my childhood was spent watching my uncle introduce the art of shaving to me. Uh, every morning as he would arise to begin his day, I would follow right behind him to witness him perform this ritual, and it was very comforting. Um, I'm not sure why, but till this day I'm mesmerized by the motions of uh, removing body hair. Um, mimicking his actions and shaving my face and eyebrows twice as I was a kid. Um, so yeah, these series represent the masculinity in me. So today we're gonna talk a little more about our background story, how we met, how we got to where we are today because we did go viral on the internet, sort of like overnight and it was pretty overwhelming. Um, some of the differences between us are 
uh, we're Indian and Pakistani, um, we're a same-sex couple, um, and we're going to talk about our personal goals, our hopes, and ask for the community, uh, both for ourselves and the LGBTQ. Um, um, before we begin, we have a couple of disclaimers. Um, the first is that we may use the word queer in our language today. Um, the way that we use it in our speech is interchangeable with, the, with LGBTQ, and it's used in our communities as a blanket term for any sexuality or gender identity that isn't normative. Specifically, it's often used as a self-descriptor for folks who don't want to define or describe the details of their sexuality or don't yet know the terms to define or describe it. We do want to take a moment to acknowledge that in the past, this term was used as a slur against gay men specifically, and it's since been reclaimed by the entire community. This is the case for us in our communities in the US, but it may not be the case elsewhere. So we just want to encourage the group to use their discretion and exercise caution if ever using this word to describe another person, especially in the LGBTQ community. The second is that we understand that we cannot personally speak to the experiences of our LGBTQ siblings abroad. So any and all notes that we make on the experiences of those in India, Pakistan, or even other parts of the United States are based on both our personal research, research and the words of others that they have trusted us with. Then the Last is that we try to use gender neutral language as much as possible while describing the LGBTQ community to be inclusive of our non-binary friends. Um, but any gendered language that we do use is intended to be inclusive of those folks too. So with that, I'll hand it over to Sufi. <laughs> All right, so uh, Anjali and I had a very modern romance. Um, we were uh, mutuals, which means we were following each other on Tumblr for like about seven years um, until we switched over to Instagram and she slid into my DMs. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, she actually reached out to me uh, in hopes of connecting to other South Asian queer community. Um, and we coordinated, she came to New York, um, and we met at the Empire State Building for the first time. This was sort of planned. Um, um, yeah, after, after coordinating, um, we spent the entire weekend there together. Uh, she came for four, four days, and I just like couldn't not see her for the rest of the time that she was there. And I ended up driving her to the airport and, and saying goodbye. Um, yeah, in, our, in expressing our shared identities with our fellow queer South Asian folks, uh, we created a space where we felt seen. Um, and heard in all aspects of our identities. Um, and for the first time, it felt like home. Yeah. We won't tell the whole story here, but during that weekend, Sufi also somehow ended up spending the night at one of my extended family members' houses, which was kind of funny to navigate because we were pretending to be straight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So here are some of the photos from the shoot that we had that went viral. Um, so we're just gonna talk a little bit about how that happened. Um, we were heading to New York for the week to spend some time there, both for our one year anniversary and it was Sufi's birthday, so we wanted to be around her friends and family. Um, and we were also attending two weddings, so there was just a brand that offered to dress us for the event and said, if you take some photos for us, we'll give you a free rental of a South Asian outfit. So that's how these happened. Um, the outside world's reactions, you wanna talk yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, although uh, the reactions were fairly positive, um, our relationship was politicized beyond compare and we didn't expect that. Um, the news outlets mainly focused on the Hindu Muslim, Pakistani Indian dynamic of our relationship. Um, and for the first time, there was this sort of pressure um, that was put on us where we became a mending barrier between two cultures and two religions that were always in conflict. Um, so it was, uh, it was a bit difficult to navigate around that. Um, and our families reacted very differently. I think the um, interesting thing that we've noticed when we're discussing the way that our families reacted very differently is that both of them reacted within the framework of protection um, and what that meant to them varied very much based on 
where we grew up and um, how immigrant our families were. Um, so on my end, I received a lot of well wishes from family, even abroad in India, um, congratulating me on WhatsApp, telling me that they saw me in the newspaper, which was really cool for everyone. Um, and meanwhile, my local family at home, my uncle was reaching out to me saying, hey, there are going to be a lot of people who want to reach out to you and talk to you and capitalize on this story, but make sure that you're not becoming clickbait. Don't just talk to anyone. Make sure that you really think about what you're saying to who, because it's very important that you put the best image of yourself out there because you mean so much to different people in different ways. Um, so my family's reaction was the polar opposite. Um, they were primarily concerned for my safety, but um, a lot of my extended family in Pakistan found out, um, and they're pretty homophobic, so um, I'm pretty sure when I visit Pakistan again, I won't be able to see them again. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, as far as why we think the photos went viral, we've noticed that there's a huge void in the space that is South Asian LGBTQ representation. Um, there aren't many South Asian queer couples who feel that they can be visible for a lot of reasons. One is just that our communities do tend to be homophobic, but also, you know, there are certain privileges that come with having fair skin and thin bodies and all of those things that South Asians don't always have. Um, including meeting those Eurocentric beauty standards that lead people to gain that kind of popularity and visibility. So um, that's why we think that you know our photos were, went so far, which, which we were not expecting at all, um, is because there was just no representation for people who were queer and looked like us. Um, so another aspect of our relationship that we can speak to is our differences. So as far as the religious difference between us, our interfaith, the interfaith nature of our relationship, um, this is actually something that I hadn't paid very much mind to throughout our relationship. I have a pretty diverse family and I actually have an uncle and some cousins who are from Pakistan and they're Muslim. Um, and so I was talking to my dad one day about, you know, how would your extended family react if I told them about Sufi, if I introduced them to Sufi? And first of all, I think he completely forgot that, you know, she's a woman and that was the primary concern of mine. But he said, I don't think you have anything to be worried about. My sister married a Pakistani man. It's, it's totally fine. They'll accept you the way that it is. And I, I appreciate so much that the way that my family is, they just took that in stride. And I know that a lot of South Asian families can't really say the same, when it, especially when it comes to India-Pakistan relations. Yeah, um, when Anjali told me uh, that's how her dad reacted, I was surprised and happy, but also confused um, as to how he would react if, if uh, me and him met, right? Because I'm not a man. Um, uh, so I grew up in a predominantly Muslim neighborhood, um, and I didn't have many Hindu friends growing up. Um, but in getting to know Anjali and learn more about her culture and her value and her beliefs and her religion, um, I like learned to celebrate uh, different uh, traditions with her. Like we um, are going to celebrate Diwali together. Um, we celebrated Pujo, which is a uh, Durga Puja. <laughs> um, although it does make me a bit nervous when I walk into uh, predominantly Hindu spaces because of my background, um, it hasn't stopped me in respecting or learning about her values as a practicing Hindu and still keeping my identity as a practicing Muslim. Um, as far as the conflict between our two countries and that I am Indian and she is Pakistani, um, for those of you who are not familiar, India and Pakistan have been at undeclared war for the last 70 years as a result of partition following British colonization of India. Um, that also led to, um, you know, Bangladesh was originally East Pakistan, 
Pakistan um, after partition and then became its own country a few years later. Um, so there is still a lot of tension between our two countries. Um, but in general, I'm a third generation immigrant, so my experience is pretty removed from India as it is today. All of my family that's out there is at least my grandparents' siblings. Um, but I do know that as a South Asian myself and a global citizen, I do have a responsibility to learn about what's happening in that country. Um, there is heavy political propaganda on both sides of the Indian India-Pakistan struggle, and my mind, when I see that, always goes to our British colonizers and the hateful imprint that they left that influences today's atmosphere between the two countries. Um, in our relationship in particular, we choose to see the similarities between our cultures, and there are many, given that we were once one country. Um, and sharing in those things in our movies and our songs, especially um, partition happened along Punjab, which is where Sufi is from. Um, there is a Punjab in India and a Punjab in Pakistan. Um, so sharing Punjabi music is <laughs> really fun for us. Um, so I'm a first generation immigrant. Um, the partition of India and Pakistan uh, displaced my family. Um, and because they were displaced, my family doesn't like Hindus, um, especially my grandma, um, my daddy, who uh, actually lived through that experience. Um, my family tells me stories about how when they first moved to northern Pakistan, there were these uh, empty mandirs, um, which are uh, Hindu temples, that were left. Um, and uh, when I visit, I think about all of the stories that still exist there, exist there and how there's no voices to to portray that or to tell that. Um, I felt a deep connection to India my, my entire life. Um, whether I was watching uh, Bollywood films when I was growing up, singing, dancing to them. Um, when it comes to differences, there are different parts of our culture uh, that we're still exploring through each other. Uh, we were only like a year and a half in our relationship, but it's been pretty great. <laughs> One aspect of our relationship, or at least of our identities and our upbringing that is different between us that the media doesn't talk about because they don't know, um, is the atmosphere in our homes. And um, I would say that my family and my home atmosphere is very liberal, especially amplified by the fact that I grew up in San Francisco, which is one of the most liber liberal cities in the US. Um, whereas Sufi's upbringing and her home environment is very conservative. I can bring Sufi home to my parents because they share similar mentalities that, as me about our differences and accept her and care for her like a member of our family. Yeah, so again, we're going to do the whole polar opposite thing. Where <laughs> I have chosen family in my life who accept love and care about me, but apart from that, I can't really bring Anjali home to my family and share my family traditions with her um, because my family doesn't accept my relationship. I was worried about um, not being, being able to give that to Anjali um, and I let her know um, pretty soon into our relationship that I wouldn't be able to um, and I asked her if she was okay with that. At this point we're gonna take a little break from talking and I'm gonna have Subi I'm not going to have her do it. She's going to do it. She's going to perform a poem for you guys. Um. This was the first poem that I wrote in California after I moved from New York. Home away from home, a home I've never known. New York City streets raise me. The nitty gritty doesn't phase me. I found a love from coast to coast, and since then I've risen on my own. To search the earth and follow my words, I seek love in one constant flow. I find peace in Karak Jai when I'm sitting alone. In Pakistani restaurants where uncles chatter away about all the things they know, except for how their wives feel, to the Hanjis and the Najis that every woman has known, disobedience is not an act of disrespect, instead of revolution when our thoughts are constantly put to rest. As far as our future goes, um, we're very aware that um, 
we don't fit the picture of the perfect South Asian life. The idealized standard as it is, is a man-woman relationship, as it is in many cultures, but in Bollywood, it's especially exaggerated the depth of romantic love that exists between a man and woman, and it's very gendered in nature, especially because gender roles are so prevalent. I did not realize my sexuality until much later in life, but Sufi actually experienced growing up with Bollywood and seeing that her sexuality was not re reflected on screen. When I was young, I didn't really think about uh, the gender factor in Bollywood films. I always thought of myself as the male in the films, and I would actually, uh, when me and my brother would sing duet songs of Bollywood films, I would fight with him and argue with him and say, no, I'm going to sing the male part. Um, <laughs> uh, but in growing older and realizing that uh, that's not my reality um, and that I am a woman and I love being one, um, I wish there was normalized on-screen representation for relationships like mine. In my family's eyes, uh, following the traditional path, I would already be married by now. I would be a nurse somewhere in New York. Um, <laughs> I would have children at a very young age, um, but instead I'm doing the total opposite. Um, and I'm breaking heteronormative barriers and uh, generational expectations. Got a little something on your face. <laughs> um, as far as for us, for our future, we do hope that one day we get married and we want four kids, but I'll let the parents in the room try to talk us out of that. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the cultural stigma um, in both our communities and others. Um, so the backlash that we got online was pretty widespread as well. In fact, when the photos first started spreading, it was mostly negativity. Um, and so we kind of had to peel ourselves away and detox from our online presence for a little bit. Um, it was definitely hard. Um, my team at work was amazing and they just sent me home. They were like, go deal with what you have to deal with. Um, but we realized that for every hateful comment that we received online, there are droves of kids who are under 18 and afraid to come out because of their homophobic parents, or communities like trans women, especially black trans women in the US who experience violence and murder. In India, um, Section 377B was recently struck down, removing a colonial era law that criminalized homosexuality. Versions of this law exist or did exist in almost all of the countries and territories that the UK colonized. And this doesn't mean that folks in India are safe. The community faces violence and rape in higher numbers than any other demographic in the country. In Pakistan, Section 377 is still enforced, which criminalizes homosexuality with up to a lifetime sentence in prison. Violence against the LGBTQ community is often tolerated within the justice, justice system, so there is no protection anywhere. In the US, um, LGBTQ youth are one and a half to th three times more likely to attempt suicide than their straight counterparts due to bullying, homophobia, targeted violence, and rejection from their communities, and we all know how important having a community is. LGBTQ youth are also at heightened risk of homelessness, which is why, especially in our area, in Oakland and SF, there are so many resources available, but that's still not enough. To date, 19 black trans women have been murdered in 2019 alone, a phenomena that the US government has now dubbed an epidemic and a public health emergency, but with little legal recourse. With all of those numbers and stats in your head, I'd like to share what our hopes are for the community, both on a personal level and community-wide. Personally, what we hope to do is start conversations. We can't claim that we're in any position to change these harsh realities for our LGBTQ siblings, but we do believe that ground-level grassroots action is the key to changing perspectives. We hope to spark conversations at home between parents and kids, whether or not they belong to the LGBTQ community. In communities where LGBTQ topics are especially stigmatized, starting conversations can eventually lead 
to change from within. Um, I'd like to share a personal example to this, which is that even within my own community at home, my mom put in a lot of the legwork. I'm going to try not to cry when I say this. Um, <laughs> my mom put in a lot of the legwork for me to by speaking to our community members and talking to them about everything as if it was, was normal, because it is, but it isn't normalized in our community. So by speaking to our community members first, I didn't have to have any awkward conversations. And I'm sure with the work that my friends in my community did with their parents too, they knew how to react positively. And if they you know, had any, reprehension for the way that I live and the way that I am, they don't show it to me at least. Um, and so the thing that we want to do that is a little bit more action-based um, is we're working on a series of videos for our YouTube channel, which is called How We Adult, emphasis on we and not how to adult because Coming of age is not a universal experience, especially not for LGBTQ folks. Again, remember that the rates of homelessness for LGBTQ youth are higher than any other group in the US. Um, so we plan to discuss topics like budgeting and grocery shopping and <laughs> meal prep because we want to show our LGBTQ subscribers that people like them can lead healthy adult lives and happy adult lives, even if the odds are stacked against them. We also want to draw upon certain things that Sufi had to learn or teach herself because she didn't have a supportive home environment or parental guidance to learn from when she was coming of age. So this is pretty personal for us. Yeah. Um, the second is we want to utilize Sufi's teaching experience and also my skills and volunteer experience to develop a financial literacy course. Um, we hope that this course is one that we can teach at local GSA, Gay Straight Alliance, it's a pretty big community in the US, um, high schools and LGBTQ centers and youth centers. Again, many LGBTQ youth don't have parental figures they can learn from and these skills are not currently taught in the US education system. I hope it's different here. Um, so we hope to bring them to the forefront of the conversation so that, again, folks like us can live fulfilling lives on their own. Um, and what we hope for our community, or I guess our ask from our community, is that we hope that people, LGBTQ or straight, feel emp empowered to start those crucial conversations, whether or not we're a conversation starter. Um, and as far as our cultural differences go, we hope that our community will use a critical eye when it comes to really any kind of messaging that encourages war with another country or that encourages hate. Um, and that you all, our community as a whole, exercises compassion with other people. And we recognize the differences in privilege and step up for more vulnerable members of our community. Thank you. Please sit down. <laughs> we do that in Norway when we love someone and <laughs> like someone that much. We feel the love, thank you. And you know, we felt the love, didn't we? Yeah, beautiful. It is, it is. Sufi and Anjali, you did came all the way to Norway, showed us trust and shared your story and you know, it was, we just witnessed true love, didn't we? <laughs> true love. But I also, you know, also felt the pain. So I just want to say to you, Sophie, I'm, I have Pakistani background myself, yeah. and in Born Free, we like to say that you have now your ho new whole heart family. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shivana. Um, thank you um, for Born Free for um, inviting us out here. And thank you for um, being so loving and trusting and um, for such a wonderful audience. I, I really appreciate it. 
And the thing you shared, you know, not only your, your love, your background, your hold, your openness, but also showed, you know, solutions, uh, showed what to do. And this is also a very core of, of Born Free, not to just discuss the problems, but where should we go Next. after this? Is there anyone here who wants to share something or say something to Anjali and Sufi? So please do, if there are any questions or what you felt hearing the story, please. You're welcome. They come all the way from San Francisco, so. Yeah? I'm here as a private person, but I'm very happy to be here. In the Norwegian broadcasting, uh, my question goes to you, um, Sufi, because you talked about um, that your family is a bit conservative and that they didn't um, accept her the way her family accepted you. So, um, if I may ask, is the main uh, problem for your family is that your sexuality or uh, or or the fact that she's Indian? I think I know the answer. I just wanted to know. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's definitely her sexuality. Um, I think if I was dating or serious with an Indian man, even if he was Hindu, it would sort of work out somehow. Um, uh, I think I've, I've accepted that and I am totally fine with it. I um, am born free and I can love who I want to love and um, <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> Thank you. Vikram, do you want to say something? Because there was... Oh, I want to say so many things. <laughs> but I don't know how, how many of those things I should say. Like, well, um, okay, so, no, it's all very personal, I think. But you love, you love like, um, Bollywood. Yeah. Have, do you, and you're into wedding planning, right? Yes. You've seen this new series called, um, about, it's about the, the uh, what do you call it? What's it called? Marriage... Made, Made in Heaven. I've seen that. You've I've seen, seen that. it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Very queer. Yeah. It's the whole series. I think here it's on Amazon Prime. I don't know. It's on but Amazon Prime. Yeah, so it's, yeah. stuff is happening, right? Yeah. I was in the cinemas here with um, a Norwegian Pakistani friend of mine, and we watched um, this like, Karan Johar film uh, about the, this family. Oh, uh, Kapoor and Sons? Yes, Kapoor and Sons. Yeah. Sitting there with all these like aunties yeah. and like, everybody there sitting there, you know, families. Yeah. And it's that's big, you know. I think what's happening now, also from mainstream kind of the mainstream popular film industry in India and influencing the diaspora, right? Yeah. And I think, so, yeah, I, but you know about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I, yeah. And I think it's so important as well that it's coming in that kind of mainstream way. Yeah, I'm not sure if you've heard of um, Ek Ladki Ko Dekha, but it's uh, also yes. a South Asian yeah. queer film, and it's um, on, on two women. Um, I do feel like the characters could have been a little more developed. It was just like, oh, hey, um, I'm gay, and then her family's like, whoa, that sucks, we don't like you, and then towards the end, they're just like, okay, we accept you. Uh, and that's usually not how it goes. It's You can't just wrap up an entire uh, film and in that. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's change happening um, and it's pretty nice to see that visibility out there. I think um, what we love seeing in Made in Heaven and what we wish we saw more in mainstream Bollywood is, like Sufi said, characters that are a little bit more fleshed out and that their stories are not just about them coming out. Because the first is that often in movies to get that that hurrah moment or that big on-screen moment where everybody is excited and happy, um, they reduce coming out into this one moment. Um, and that's really not how it is for a lot of folks. Coming out is an iterative process and you come out in one space and then you go to another and you're back in the closet. And it was kind of like that for me, um, even though I had a little less to fear in that regard, um, because I already had spoken to my family about it. I would talk to some of my friends and then I would go to work and I was in the closet. So um, I think more realistic portrayals of what life is like beyond coming out for our LGBTQ community would be amazing to see in Bollywood. I don't have a question, but I just want to say that one of the greatest gifts you are giving us right now is just by 
sitting there and seeing the love between you is really a proof that love transcends anything, no matter what religion, background, ethnicity, or whatever it is. So I just wanted to thank you for that. It is a true gift and inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think those beautiful uh, birds of Suji will be the last birds. Do you want to say? It's going to say we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Sufi and Anjali, and they will uh, stay here with us uh, um, later as well. So if you have any question or want to talk to them, it will be possible. What are the name of the YouTube channel? Oh, it's just called Sufi and Anjali. <laughs> We didn't get that creative with it. <laughs> yes. Stor varm applaus till jentene. Thank you so much.